circle and ready to come up to the plate is Kurt Bleffrey. And the surprising part about it is this, that Hank Bauer has moved Bleffrey into the catching spot tonight, and he's leading off. Bleffrey is a left-handed hitter, batting at 231, and he's 3 for 13. As far as these two ball clubs are concerned, the Oakland A's have won three ball games this year and have lost two of the five they have played. But one of the two they have lost has been to the Baltimore Orioles on their opening day at Municipal Stadium in Baltimore. As far as Baltimore is concerned, they won that opening game and the one preceding, uh, one following that, and then immediately dropped two more. So their record is two and two. Oh, one and oh, with the Oakland A's. So we'll see what we shall see. As Emmett Ashford is called for the batter to step up to the plate, and Kurt Bleffrey moves in to take a look at Luke Krause's first pitch. Shallowing up at third base is Sal Bando to a left-hand hitter. Playing deep on the right side, first baseman Webster. Johnny Donaldson in the hole between first and second, the outfield fan to right and deep. Luke Krause pitches, and the game is on. In there for a American League Baseball is underway in Northern California. Blue Cross takes his sign from Roof, comes over his head, kicks and throws. A curveball is outside. One ball, one strike count. At the plate, Kurt Bleffrey. Spells his name B-L-E-F-A-R-Y. Bleffery. Fastball. Just a little high and perhaps a little outside. Two ball, one strike count. On deck to go next will be center fielder Paul Blair. He'll be followed by Brooks Robinson, a very classy third baseman. Luke Krauss leaning forward, gets his sign, pumps one time, kicks and throws. Rips the fastball in there low. Three ball, one strike count. Everything has sort of settled down to the norm now after the pregame festivities and activities. Cross is ready. Comes to the plate with a medium speed pitch. It's high for ball four. So Bleffrey walks here in the top half of the first inning. Cross passes the first man he faces here in the ball game. And there are those who will tell you that this is a fatal move to walk the first man up against you in an inning. But we've seen that go over the boards four or five times this year. Hitting right-handed now and stepping up is Paul Blair. He has three hits this year and 15 at-bats in the four games that have been played by the Baltimore Orioles. And he's sporting a batting percentage of 200 even. A right-handed batter from a slight crouch. Swings on the first pitch and hits a high foul ball off the first base side. That'll be back into the crowd out of play. Ramon Webster from first gave it quite a rundown, but he wasn't able to get to it. He stands about three quarters deep at the plate and hugs up tight against it. Blue Cross ready to take his sign now from his battery mate, Roof. There's the middle of the target. In comes the pitch. Curveball. That's just outside shoulder high. One ball, one strike count. Ball Blair, the batter. Kurt Bleffrey, the runner at first base, and we'll keep an eye on him for you. Checks that runner back over his left shoulder. Now comes to the plate as the runner breaks the pitch. A swung on, hit out in the right field. Going overboard in a big hurry. Reggie Jackson almost overran the ball, but he's got it. Hurries to throw back to first base to Webster. And they've got two.
pitches to that for the Baltimore Birds. We'll give them to you in a moment. Cross pitches, soft curveball. They slap foul off the first base side. And I think at the expense of a broken bat. One ball, two strike count. Two outs, nobody on. Top half of the first inning. The coaches for the Baltimore Birds. At first base is Earl Weaver. And at third, the veteran Billy Hunter. Has called for time. He wants to go out and talk to Lou Krause. While Brooks Robinson picks up a new bat. Here is an oddity as far as Brooks Robinson is concerned. He's had only one base hit in 14 times up, and that base hit was a home run. Krause is ready. Delivers to him a slow curve. That's high. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Nobody on here in the top half of the first inning. A double play has erased the big chance for Baltimore. Luke Cross is ready now. Pumps one time. Delivers fastball. Swung on. Hit the straightaway center field. Monday's wheel is going back to the track. Under it. Makes the catch. So, despite the walk, nothing across in the top half of the first inning. And the score at the end of half an inning of play now. It is Baltimore, nothing, and the Oakland A's now coming to bat. Speaking of the Oakland A's, they're happy to be playing host to a new Bay Area sports feature, the game with the California Golden Bears at the Coliseum the night of April 25th. The A's will play the university team, an exhibition game for the benefit of the Oakland Athletic League and the University of California Academic Awards program. The A's will pay all expenses of putting the game on and turn over two-thirds of the gross receipts to the Oakland Athletic League and the remaining one-third to the university. Tickets are on sale now for that game at a dollar and a half for adults and a dollar for students. And we're told that students at all Oakland high schools and junior high schools are selling them. There will be no reserve seats. All tickets are on a first-come, first-choice basis. A's owner Charles O. Finley invites you to join with the A's and help make this a successful event for the benefit of two very worthy local causes. Don't forget the tickets are a dollar and a half for adults and one dollar for students for any seat in the house. Now to come to bat for their first time in the Oakland Coliseum, the Oakland A's will be sending up the little roadrunner, Campy Campanaris. He'll be followed by Reggie Jackson, the right fielder, and Sal Bando. The Oakland A's wearing their wedding gown white uniforms and their white kangaroo shoes and now their very classic gold batting helmets. Setting the Baltimore Ball Club for you defensively. At first base, Book Powell. The second baseman is Dave Johnson. At shortstop is Mark Belanger. Robinson, and he can do it all as far as defense is concerned and offense when he's clicking. Out in left field is Frank Robinson, and he's an Oakland front. In center field, Paul Blair, and in right field is Dave May. On the mound is left-hander Dave McNally, getting his first start in 1968. Dave McNally getting his sign now from his battery mate, Kurt Fleffery. Leans forward, gets his sign now as Campy crouches in the box. The pitch is made to Campanaris. He swings on it and falls it right back. Look out, it's right up here too. That will be strike one. Dave McNally, last year with Baltimore. One seven, lost seven. He's from Lutherville, Maryland. McNally makes the pitch to the plate. Campanaris ignores it. That's ball one. One ball and one strike. Johnny McNamara coaching down behind third base for the A's, his customary spot. And the coach at first base, very fine former American League catcher. You'll find his name in the record book, Sherm Lawler. Fast ball to Campanaris in off the fist. Counts two balls and one strike. 
case you hooked up with us late, we're in the last half of inning number one, the very first American League ball game to be played in Northern California, and the very first to be played here at the beautiful Oakland Coliseum. The hosts, the Oakland A's, the Vistas, the Baltimore Orioles. McNally delivers, fastball, pop through the strike. Two ball, two strike count. For Bert Campanaris, the leadoff bat for the Oakland A's. The Baltimore Orioles are playing slightly shaded around the left. The biggest hole in the outfield is up the power alley in right center. McNally kicks and throws. The left-hander has a fastball. It's drilled back on the screen, back above the screen, into the crowd. And the count rides along now with two balls, two strikes. Bert Campanaris, the wearer of number 19. And I sincerely hope that this young fellow can get on base because the thousands that have come in here want to see him run. I guarantee you, he'll spark you. The 2-2 count. Swung on. There's a high pop up going out into very short center field. Going back for it is the second baseman. Johnson's under it and makes the catch. So Campanaris pops up into very short and shallow center field. The second baseman able to handle, Dave Johnson. One away here in the last half of the first inning, and that brings up Reggie Jackson. Here's a young fella for whom the Oakland A's, manager Bob Kennedy and all the coaches have very high hopes. This young fella out of Arizona State College can do it all. He has the tools and he has the talent. Experience, yes, perhaps he needs some of that yet, but he's been playing very fine ball since the starting bell in 1968. A left-handed hitter. Matter of fact, he's toting the highest batting for Sonny. Takes more than a half cut of curveball, and that's called against him for strike one. As a left-handed hitter, Reggie has nine base blows for 18 times up, and he sports a batting percentage of 500 as he stands at the plate right now. McNally is careful to pitch to him, throws him the fastball, and that's under the knees. One ball and one strike. One out here in the bottom of the first inning. There's no score in a ball game. We've just gotten it underway here at the Coliseum. Fleffrey behind the plate tonight, Kirk Fleffrey. You'll find uh, his name as an outfielder also. Curveball, and Reggie chases that low curve and doesn't get it. One ball, two strike count. Fleffrey played with Baltimore last year, as you all know. He appeared in 155 ball games. Brooklyn, New York boy. Pumps up the sign now to Dave McNally, the left-handed Baltimore pitcher. Dave over his head, twists and throws. A crossfire that's in there for the strike. gets dropped by Bleffrey. He throws down to first base in plenty of time to get Jackson, who will be chucked up on the board as a strikeout, give the pitcher an assist and the first baseman a put out. So that'll be the first strikeout in tonight's ball game. The batter coming up now is Bando. Young fellow has uh, sort of evened off or leveled off a bit. He was throwing a batting percentage of uh, well over 300. Conferring regularly third base and hitting in the number three slot. For the Aces, one home run, batting at 263. McNally comes to him with a soft curve, and that's downstairs for ball one. Salvatore Bando, a right-hand hitter. Very well put together, young fella. And on top of that, he's got the muscles. Bando waving the wood, two down. Nobody on last of the first inning. McNally pitches him. Bando bounces it off the rubber of the home plate, right up the middle of the diamond, coming in fast forward. It's a shortstop and fires it over to first base. Belanger makes his play, and the side is retired. So three up and three down quietly here in the last half of inning number one. And the score at the end of one full inning of play at the Coliseum. It's Baltimore nothing and Oakland nothing. Dave Niles have got some bad news for you. Oh, now, just a minute, Frank. Don't tell me they're sending me to Petaluma. No, it's it's not quite that bad. But, uh, Dave... <laughs> not there, Petaluma. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here come letters from Petaluma, Dave. We're in trouble right away. No, now that you're on the air from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., Dave, uh, there are times, I'm afraid, when the Oakland A's are back east 
You're going to be preempted. I'm going to be preempted. Is that painful? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's. Uh, it does mean though you're not going to get to do your show. I, I don't know how to break that news to you. Well, we try to take these pieces of bad luck with courage, Frank. You mean I'm going to just go in there and sit there and listen to the baseball? That's right. But I'm also happy to tell you that uh, I'm going to be fortunate enough to be able to work my show every day from 6 to 10 a.m. to never play baseball games at that hour. Some guys get all the breaks, Frank. You jump right out of bed there, and you go in and you do those. 4.30 in the morning you get up. Yeah. Right? Well, get good luck there. to you, Dave. The Baltimore Birds come to bat. They'll be sending Frank Robinson up. He's the number four hitter in their order. Before he steps in, let's pause for station identification. This is the Oakland A's Baseball Network. This is the Major League Voice of Northern California, KNBR 68 in San Francisco. Frank Robinson, Lanches home in Los Angeles, California. Right-handed hitter steps in there. This is one of the classy ball players of the American League. Right-hand hitter swings on the first pitch and lifts a high fly ball into very short right center field. Donaldson, the second baseman, is under it and hauls it down out of the night for out number one. Well, Robinson up there, first ball hitting is popped out to Donaldson. One away here in the top half of the second inning. That brings on Book Powell. And they are saying in Baltimore that so goes Book Powell, so go the Baltimore Birds hoping that this young fella has a big year because it seems that he's the bell cow of the ball club, particularly in the hitting department. And if he does come through, these birds can be tough. He's batting at 429. Across a soft curve. is under the knees for ball one. Big left-hand hitter. This ball is a blonde fellow from Florida. Lakeland was his home. He now lives in Miami. Ball swung on the ball. There's a long drive deep in the right field. And might go all the way. It does. It's into the right center field section for a home run for Book Powell. That is his first home run of the year. And his run batted in puts the Baltimore Birds out in front one to nothing. And off cross. That is hit number one and run number one. So now Baltimore leads it. Coming up for the Orioles will be second baseman Dave Johnson. Johnson is a right-hand hitter. Left foot forward to the plate, stands deep and spraddled out across. Batter's box. Cross is ready, kicks and throws, tries the fastball, and that's high off the face for ball one. One to nothing here in the top half of the second inning. So just a moment ago. Powell hitting his first home run of the year. And that's only the second home run that Baltimore's manufacturer. Brooks Robinson had the other one. So it's easily understandable when they say that if Book Powell has a big year, the Orioles can too. Cross delivers, his pitch is in there for the strike. One out, the base is empty here in the top half of inning number two. Baltimore leading it one to nothing on Powell's home run. Gets set, twists, throws, an overhand curveball. It's low on outside. Two ball, one strike count. Tomorrow, same two teams will be back at it again. Jim Harden will be going against Chuck Dobson. Cross is ready. Throws a let up fastball, and it's swung on and fouled off the handle of the bat. Two balls and two strikes on Dave Johnson. He'll be followed by right fielder Dave May. playing their normal positions for this right-hand hitter. The outfield playing just about straight away with the exception of Rick Mundy. He's on the first base side of second as we look out from home plate. The hole in the outfield is up the power alley in left center. Grass delivers, fastball outside. That runs a count full now to this right-hand hitter, Dave Johnson, who was batting at 333. It's 4 for 12. Four games, the Three twos him for the fastball. Hit down on two halves to Bando. The third baseman has it. Throws over to Ramon Webster in time, and there's out number two. 
This Fando, when he has to, can really rear back and chunk that rocket right across the diamond. He zips it. Dave May is the batter. He's been up only one time and failed to get a base hit. He's a left-hand hitter. Hugs up on the plate rather tightly and stands about midway in batter's box all the way around. Right foot forward to the plate and holds the stick almost straight up and down when he is and pumping it back and forth. Cross comes to him a fastball and rips that low, ball one. Dave May, who was with Rochester for half a season last year, hit the 317 for Rochester. Then Baltimore pulled him up for 36 ball games. He hit 235. Soft curve swung on. There's a high fly ball hit down the right field line, drifts into foul ground. Coming over for it is Donaldson, the second baseman. He's got it. Oh, after a long run, Donaldson hauls it in. But in the second inning, the nothing nothingness of the ball game has been broken. Luke Powell's home run was the run in the inning. He had the hit. So there's no one left on. There were no errors. So the score at the end of an inning and a half, it's Baltimore 1. Oakland has nothing. The Oakland A's are introducing an all-new program of starting times for baseball fans here in the Bay Area. For the benefit of the working man, the A's will play dominantly a night game home schedule of the 81 home games at the Coliseum. 60 of those will be played at night, including three 20-night doubleheaders. Our starting times for weekday night games will be 7.30, allowing fans to get home just a little earlier. Our Saturday night games will be at a very popular time, we feel, being presented at 6 o'clock. This will allow fans to do their regular Saturday chores or relax around the house or go to the beach and still be able to get out and see a Major League ball game. By starting on Saturday night at 6 o'clock, we give fans a chance to get out to the ballpark at a reasonable hour and then enjoy a night out at your favorite restaurant or night spot following. Our Sunday afternoon games will begin at 1.30, which will give fans plenty of time to go to church and still make it to the ballpark in time for the very first pitch. And we hope to see you at the beautiful Oakland Alameda County Coliseum many times during the 1968 American League season. You'll be here, won't you? Number two, Raymond Webster will be the first man up for the Oakland A's. He'll be followed by Danny Cater, the left fielder, and then will come Johnny Donaldson up for his first black at it. Emmett Ashford has gone out to the mound, uh, taking a look at uh, the pitcher's footing, and he's going to call, I believe, for a groundsman to fight to tamp that down. And while he does, it might be a pretty good idea to take a look at the scoreboard and see what's been happening going around. Isn't much, as Hal Ashby says, and uh, Mr. Ashby, that's very true. In the American League, the uh, games on tap are Chicago and Boston, Cleveland and Detroit, Washington and Minnesota, New York, of course, and California. In the National League, San Francisco is playing at New York. Uh, Chicago, Atlanta. The final score on that was Atlanta 2 and Chicago nothing. Negro was the winner on that one. Now the our hands the losing pitcher. And Philadelphia defeated Los Angeles today 3 to 2. And Drysdale was a losing pitcher on that when he went all the way. Fryman was the winning pitcher. He was relieved by Farrell on the eighth inning. Houston playing in Pittsburgh. And St. Louis at Cincinnati. And at St. Louis, at the end of innings. Get this now. It's Cincinnati 3 and St. Louis 3. So they're having a wing ding down there. In the NBA playoffs, I know many of you are interested in the uh, Basketball Association playoffs. The final score for you, Boston 114, Philadelphia 106. The final game is going to be played at Philadelphia. Looks as though they've pretty much taken care of Pitcher's Mound. However, to keep his arm warm, stepping off to the left of Pitcher's Mound, Dave McNally has thrown down to his catcher, who tonight is Kurt Bleffrey. I don't remember Kurt Bleffrey ever being behind the plate before. He has played in right field. He has played in left field. He's played at first base. 
but never before do I remember of his having been behind the plate. But Kurt Clefley was a surprise starter tonight as the catcher and as the leadoff man. And he's been working with Dave McNally, who right now has a lead over the Oakland A's, one to nothing by virtue of the home run. It was hit by Book Powell with one out and the bases empty in the top half of inning number two. Book Powell's first home run of the year. And again, let me repeat, uh, Book Powell, and they expect him to be the bell cow of the offense again this year at Baltimore, was hitting at 429, was six for 14, when he stepped up, got his seventh base hit of the year, and his first home run on his 15th at bat. And you know that's going to help his batting percentage just a little bit more. It jumps considerably because of the youngness of the season and the number of times at bat. Would you like to tell you that this broadcast is authorized under rights granted by the Oakland A's Baseball Club strictly for the entertainment of our listening audience. Any other use of the descriptions and accounts of this game without the express consent and permission of the Oakland A's is strictly prohibited. Well, it looks as though the uh, groundkeeper may have taken care of the soft spot just in front of pitcher's rubber. Matter of fact, uh, just a little bit more manicuring going on down there to get it ready for McNally. To pitch to Raymond Webster, the first man up for the Oakland A's in the last half of the second inning. Webster, the possessor of one home run for Oakland of the five that has been hit by the Oakland ball club, is a left-hand hitter. He'll be followed by a pretty smooth swinger by the name of Danny Cater, getting his second start of the season. He's in left field. And then Johnny Donaldson, who's been waving a pretty good bat, particularly when uh, there are runners on the bases. Donaldson will be followed then by Big Phil Roof, the catcher, hitting in the uh, number seven spot, but hitting in a number four position here in this inning if he's needed. We again would like to remind you that Jim Paglioni, who was injured uh, about uh, seven or eight days ago, is still having trouble with his left knee. It had to be stitched. He tried to play a little bit too soon and broke the stitches on his knee. And the doctors have advised that Macaroni not play until it either is completely healed or until the wound has been completely knitted. Right now, water is being added out on pitcher's mound to soften the clay just a little bit so uh, it will not slip and slide so much. When uh, McNally comes down off the mound on his forward motion, throwing his leg down off of uh, pitcher's rubber. I don't know, uh, when you were a kid, did you ever uh, slip and slide on uh, very dusty uh, dirt? You know how quickly your feet can go out from under you? It's even, uh, it's even worse than, uh, than mud. Matter of fact, uh, that's what the groundskeepers are trying to do right now, muddied up a little bit, so uh, there's a little better footing for the pitcher out on the mound. In the meantime, the ball game is being held up here. The very first one to be played at Oakland Coliseum, the very first American League ball game to be played in Northern California. But we're most mighty glad that Charles O. Finley brought his ball club to Oakland. He apparently is uh, satisfied with uh, the footing underneath. He's trying a few warm-up pitches down. See if uh, everything's all right. Fleffrey takes the ball and throws it through to second baseman Johnson. And Ramon Webster, who has been back on the... Uh, back in the dugout, will probably make his appearance now. Come on out and uh, we'll see how the footing is all the way around. In case you're tuned in with the slate... We'd like to set the Baltimore defense for you once more. Book Powell is the first base. At second base is Dave Johnson. The third baseman is Brooks Robinson. Mark Blanger back for a short stay at least from uh, his military duties. Is in at his usual position shortstop. Out on left field is Frank Robinson. The center fielder Paul Blair. And the right fielder is Dave May. Ramon Webster kicking him out on the spike. Stepping in. Ramon Webster batting at an even 200. He has four for 20 and has hit one home run this year for the Oakland A's. Works up somewhat on the handle of the bat and bats him a slight crouch. Bluffs the punt, takes the pitch, and it's low. That's ball one. At third base, Brooks Robinson 
Bang rather shot only came charging in, of course, from third, expecting that uh, Webster might drop one down his way. The left-hander delivers. A curve is over for the strike. One ball, one strike to count on the leadoff man here in the last half of the second inning, Ramon Webster, hitting number four in the order. Danny Cater hanging around to hit next. McNally ready. Kicks and throws. His crossfire is outside. He'll give you that fast wrinkle. He'll step a little bit toward first base. And try to crossfire that plate and pick up the corner, either near or waist high. Webster's count now. Two balls, one strike. Next pitch to him is up above the letters. That is ball three. So McNally now has gotten behind to the leadoff man here in the last half of the second inning in a ball game that has the Baltimore Orioles leading one to nothing by virtue of Book Powell's home run with one out, the base is empty in the top half of inning number two. And that's the only hit in the ball game so far for Baltimore. McNally ready, delivers, the pitch is swung on. There's a high top foul spinning back rather than into the crowd out of play. Matter of fact, it's right down into the second tier right under our microphone. Let us tell you that uh, our position here at the Coliseum is a very fine one. We're directly behind home plate, looking right down over the head and shoulders of the plate umpire, the catcher, and the batsman. So we get a pretty good slant of what's coming in. Right side of the infield deep to a left-hand hitter. Here comes the 3-2 delivery swung on. There's a high popper going back to third base. Right on the rim of the infield grass, it's Brooks Robinson. He's got it. So that's all for Webster. A high pop-up to third base. That brings on Danny Cater. Danny hasn't played a lot this year. He was used as a pinch hitter and as a defensive man a couple of times, and this is the second start he has gotten so far this year. Danny batting at 167 has one hit in six times up. And he hit pretty well during the spring training games. As a matter of fact, uh, we felt many, many times when Cater was up there that there uh, was a pretty good chance of getting that uh, bat on the ball. He's known for that. Stands deep, left foot forward to the plate. Takes a credit to first pitch and doesn't get it. A tight one in off the knees. Actually, at the last moment, he tried to hold up and could. His momentum took him too far around. No ball, one strike count. One out. Bottom of the second inning. The bases are clean. Cater trying to get on to start something here for the A's. McDonnelly serves him up a curveball, and that's under Cater's knees. One ball and one strike. He serves up one and one. Cater swings on it and rips it back foul. Out of window the second tier. One ball, two strike count on Danny Cater. Hanging around is John Donaldson, who incidentally swings the heaviest bat in this entire ball club. And to take a look at John, you wouldn't believe that he could swing that bottle bat that much. But he'll slap it here and he'll slap it there for you and get a two-bagger every once in a while. Cater settling down and got his box. Bleffrey behind the plate tonight for Baltimore. A sign for the pitch. Emmett Ashford is ready to take a look at it, so McNally is about ready to serve it up. Here comes that one-two delivery. An overhand fastball hit down to the right side. Boom Powell digs it out of the dirt. Holds his hand up to his pitcher. Says he'll take care of things, and he does. Over and steps on first, and Cater is out. To Powell on assist. Two down in the bottom of the second inning, and that brings up Donaldson. Johnny Dewar of number 12. Using those white kangaroo shoes of his, he kicks the dirt around in batter's box, gets himself squared away, stands about three quarters deep, chokes up on the handle of that bottle bat, and he's ready to go. Two down, the bases empty in the second inning, one to nothing, Baltimore. McNally is all set. Rocks back, kicks and throws. The first pitch to Donaldson is high. One ball, no strike count. Donaldson moving that bat back and forth easily. 
Now puts it up behind his left ear. Looks at a let-up fastball, and that's high. Two balls and no strikes. I get quite a kick out of these pitchers, and I know you will too when you come to the Coliseum. You watch them. They'll give you a lot of motion, very little speed, or they'll give you very little motion and whip that ball at you. Try to throw these hitters off stride in any way they possibly can. There's the fastball. That's a little high. So Donaldson has gotten out in front on the 3-0 count now. Three balls and no strikes. If you wonder where our broadcasting partner is, uh, well, he's over on the big guy tonight. He's over on the two talking to the folks. But he'll be back here second half of the ball game. We'll be talking at you. Rio delivery in there for the strike. The take was on. Johnny watched the sail by. Now for the three and one delivery. McNamara has flashed the sign, the Kennedy sign from the bench. Donaldson knows whether he has the goal light or not. He did and swung on it. Fouled it back. Three balls and two strikes. Last half of the second, two out, nobody on. Donaldson the batter, and Roof to follow if Donaldson gets on. Cashew just flipped the radio on. We're in the bottom of the second inning with Baltimore leading it. One to nothing, having uh, picked up a run on Boog Powell's first home run of the year, hit into the right center field stands, about 385 feet over the 385-foot sign. Pitch swung on by Donaldson, caught back foul into the second field. understand while well, uh, we were making the first road swing of the season. We opened on the road, as you know. It would be a friendly crowd here tonight, and by George, they didn't miss it. We got a few people here. 3 2 pitch. Donaldson swings on it, pops it up back to third base. Brooks Robinson steps over in foul ground now by third base and makes the catch. So that's all for Donaldson, and the A's go down here in order. One, two, three for McNally with nothing across. And the score at the end of two full innings of play now. It's Baltimore 1 and Oakland nothing. Say Dave Niles. Yes, now, Frank Dill. Don't always interrupt me, Dave. <laughs> now that the regular season is underway, the exhibition season is all over, I hope you're listening to those baseball broadcasts and learning something, fella. Oh, I'm right there on the edge of my chair, Frank, except when I'm on the air from 10 to 2. But listen, uh, Frank, these uh, fellows like Al Helfer, for example, I hear him using expressions that I don't understand. Like the other day, he said, that guy's squeezing the bat so hard you can see the sawdust coming out. Yeah. Oh, what is this? They're not really that strong, are they? Listen, huh? Al Helfer wouldn't kid you, fella. He uh, he tells you like it is. Yeah, but how is it? That's <laughs> what I'm trying to find out, Frank. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, Dave. Look, they don't really squeeze sawdust out, but since you're having trouble learning, you're obviously a slow learner. <laughs> uh, I'm going to give you a tip. You I'll can, ignore that. Go you ahead. can fake your way through this thing if you'll just use the word old, like the old ballpark and the old ball and swing the old bat. Just try that out. Out of the old baseball game, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Blue Cross getting ready now to work his third inning of his first start in the 1968 campaign. Aware of number 20. Right hander Luke Cross, the first A to sign a 1968 contract for this playing season. Will pitch to Mark Belanger, the shortstop, batting number eight in the order. Mark's uh, only been up two times. He's had one base hit, and he's sticking along at 500. His crouch hitter bends over, swings at the first pitch, and there's a long fly ball hit deep in the left field. That might be out of here. It is out of here. Oh, so Belanger steps right up and hits the very first pitch into the left field stands for a homer. And that is the second hit of Kraus the second run. And oddly enough, both hits have been for home runs. And in the way of uh, home runs for Baltimore, that'll be their third this year. Coming up to the plate now, with Baltimore leading two to nothing, is Dave McNally, the pitcher who undoubtedly feels a great deal better about situations than now stands. He's a right-handed batter, Dave McNally. That the first pitch a little bit late. Doesn't get it. That's strike one. McDowell right stands deep at the plate. Just about a straightaway stance to the pitcher. Cross is ready.
McNally comes overhand with a soft curveball, and it's low and outside. McNally had a notion, but checked up on the swing. One ball, one strike on Dave McNally. Cuts the next one loose. There's his fastball, and there's a high pop-up as a result in foul ground off first base side. Webster chasing under it, makes the catch. So there is the first out here in the third inning. Down the bullpen, got a little action for the uh, Oakland A's. Diego Segui. Young fellow who won uh, 16, lost one in the Venezuelan Winter League. He's rounding into shape slowly, but uh, he's starting to throw that fork ball pretty well. And there's a chance he may get in the ball game, because if you're looking to the last half of the third inning, the pitcher's spot comes up in the number three position. Batting order. Up at the plate, hitting left-handed now, is the leadoff for Kirk Bleffrey, who walked in the first inning, takes the first pitch over for the strike. The next pitch is a high popper going down to second base. Back in the room of the outfield grass, Johnny Donaldson. He's been busy tonight. Makes the catch. So we've got the second out here in the top third inning. That brings on Paul Blair, who hit into a double play when he hit a rifle shot to right field that Reggie Jackson was able to grab. And on the hit and run play, Kurt Bluffrey was on his way to second and couldn't uh, break down in time. He started back all right, but they had him by plenty. Jackson threw a strike to Ramon Webster at first base to double him up. Ball Blair swings on the first pitch, and there's another fly ball to right field. Reggie Jackson slips, but I think he has the range on it. He does. Grabs it, foul ground, steps across the foul line, and runs on into the dugout. Ball Blair flies out to right field to Reggie Jackson here in the third inning, but not before one run was manufactured on one hit. That was uh, Belanger's home run. There were no errors. And uh, nobody left on. So the score at the end of two and one half innings of play, it is Baltimore two, and Oakland has nothing. Well, tell you kids, I want you to listen to me a minute, because you've got a chance to be among the first to have an official Oakland A's baseball cap. And that chance is coming your way on Saturday night, April the 20th, when the A's play the Washington Senators right here at this Coliseum. And the A's will present a cap to every youngster... 14 and under, who attends that game. Now, don't you miss out on getting one of the attractive Kelly Green caps, your souvenir of the premier American League season of the A's right here in the city of Oakland. Oh, yes, the game time that night, April 20th, is at 6 o'clock in the evening. So tell all your pals about it and bring them along with you, too. See Campy Campaneris and John Donaldson and Sal Bando and Reggie Jackson and Rick Mundy and all the Oakland A's battle those Washington Senators. And get a free Oakland A's cap to boot. How about that now? Remember, it's Saturday night, April the 20th. Cap night right here at this beautiful Coliseum. Mays now came up for another whack at it. Bill Roof will be up for his first at bat. That big guy from Kentucky. He has a pair of hands on him like hams. Very nice guy, this Roof. He chokes up on the handle of the bat and swings it hard. McNally comes to him with a soft curve, and that's right in there at the knees for the strike. Do nothing, Baltimore. At the start of tonight's game, they were a half game behind in the standings, behind open. Roof uh, checks up on a pitch and takes it low. Roof apparently uh, in starting to swing on that ball, and inc incidentally, Ashford, he called it a strike against him. He may have hurt his elbow or his arm because he turns around and seemingly he's in pain. Willie Jones, the trainer, has come out and he's examining the left arm and left shoulder of Phil Roof. Because this is very possible. A man can do this. If you get caught just a little off stride and you try to get your muscles to do something, quite often you'll, uh, you'll pull them a little 
or you pull a socket of a shoulder, or uh, as you know many times, you fellas who do a lot of running, and you gals too, you're liable to pop a knee when you least expect it. Well, apparently Phil's going to be all right. Uh, Willie Jones has gone back into the A's dugout down the third base side, and Roof's going to try it again. His count is no balls and two strikes. Now he waves that bat back and forth as Dave McNally takes a sign from Bleffery, his catcher of the evening. He rocks back, kicks, and throws. A soft curve, and Roof hits it down on two hops to third base. Brooks Robinson gloves it, throws the book Powell at first, and Roof is down. So we have one out here in the bottom of the third inning, and that will bring up uh, Rick Mundy. Young fellow batting, uh, battling a terrific batting slump. He hasn't been able to get off the pad, really, this year. He's had one base hit, and that was a triple, in 17 times at bat. And this is not like Mundy. He's hitting at 0-59. Rest assured that Rick's going to do better than that. take a look at the scoreboard just as soon as we have an opportunity. I'll actually be getting it all put together for us. Curveball. Monday runs up on a curveball and takes a low for ball one. Bluff to punt. Took that pitch. Talking to uh, Rick today. He was mentioning hitting, talking about hitting. He said he's going to do this. He's going to get on any way he can. This guy can run. He's one of the speed merchants on the ball club. Swings on the pitch, and there's a bounder to shortstop. Plenty of time for the play, and Belanger makes it. And Rick Mundy is out. Two down here in the last half of the third inning, and Kraus is the batter. We assume with Segui having warmed up, he's not warming up now. Had anyone gotten on, we may have had a pinch hitter for Kraus. One thing about this, uh, just a little off stride. And you try to get your muscles to do something, quite often you'll, uh, you'll pull them a little, or you'll pull a socket of a shoulder, or uh, as you know many times, you fellas who do a lot of running, and you gals too, you're liable to pop a knee when you least expect it. Well, apparently Phil's going to be all right. Uh, Willie Jones has gone back into the A's dugout down the third base side, and Roof's going to try it again. His count is no balls and two strikes. Waves that bat back and forth as Dave McNally takes a sign from Bleffery, his catcher of the evening. He rocks back, kicks, and throws. A soft curve, and Roof hits it down on two hops to third base. Brooks Robinson gloves it, throws the book Powell at first, and Roof is down. So we have one out here in the bottom of the third inning, and that'll bring up uh, Rick Mundy. Young fella batting, uh, battling a terrific batting slump. He hasn't been able to get off the pad, really, this year. He's had one base hit, and that was a triple, in 17 times at bat. And this is not like Monday. He's hitting at 0-59. Rest assured that Rick's going to do better than that. We'll take a look at the scoreboard just as soon as we have an opportunity. I'll actually be getting it all put together for us. Curveball. Monday runs up on a curveball and takes a low for ball one. Bluff to punt. Took that pitch. Talking to uh, Rick today mentioning hitting, talking about hitting. He said he's going to do this. He's going to get on any way he can. This guy can run. He's one of the speed merchants on the ball club. Swings on the pitch, and there's a bounder to shortstop. Plenty of time for the play, and Belanger makes it. And Rick Mundy is up. Two down here in the last half of the third inning, and Kraus is the batter. With Segui having warmed up, he's not warming up now. Had anyone gotten on, we may have had a pinch hitter for Kraus. One thing about this uh, boy, Kraus, he can hit that ball pretty well for you, too. Go way in with a bingle every once in a while, and a long shot at that. Soft curveball is floated in there for the strike. The Summit Ashford really puts on the antics. He'll let you know when it's a strike and when it isn't. He takes his job seriously, works at it, and he's a show on himself. A gentleman, and a credit to the game. Curveball, swung on the cross and beaten down into the ground foul. Two balls, or no balls, two strikes, a count on uh, Cross, the wear of number 20. Last half of the third inning, two to nothing in favor of Baltimore. 
They've done it on two solo home runs. One hit by Powell, one hit by Belanger. Fastball to Krause is outside by Hare. And a little bit low. One ball, two strike count. Outfield for Krause, not too deep. Fanned around slightly to right. Infield playing their normal positions. McNally, the left-hander, kicks, throws the fastball, and uh, Krause trying to get out of the way of it. Has the ball hit the bat and scoop back into the crowd out of play. Count rides with the ball and two strikes. That ball came whistling back there pretty good. Right down there beside a young fellow wearing a green Oakland A's cap. McNally delivers. Cross takes that pitch is high off the face. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, nobody on. Bottom of inning number three. Baltimore leads it 2 nothing. They took the opening game just a week ago, their opening game, and the opening game of the American League season from the Oakland A's with a score of 3-1 to one at Baltimore. Phoebus was the winning pitcher in that ball game, if you recall, and Jim Hunter lost it. Pitch, play the swung on the cross and pop back foul. Somebody else goes home with a souvenir from the Coliseum. Two balls and two strikes. In that ball game at Baltimore, it was Etchebaron behind the plate, and Bleffrey, Kurt Bleffrey, played in right field and hit right ahead of him. Now they pitch to Lou Krause on the 2-2 count. McNally, in his first start of the year, rocks back, delivers, soft curve, that's high, ball three. Three balls and two strikes. ball game opening day that Reggie Jackson who has three home runs now got his very first home run fast ball to cross high ball four so Hope Springs eternal in the breast of the Oakland faithful as cross throws his bat away gets his jacket now from the bench and uh, starts trotting down to first base Gaffy Campaneris Coming up there. He's the little Oakland flyer on the A train. Right handed batter, hitting from a crouch. McNally checks his runner across at first. Pitches the plate. Campanaris takes an easy curveball outside. One ball, no strike count. Campanaris popped up in the first inning as the leadoff man. Popped right up to second baseman Dave Johnson. Campy sort of springs at the pitch when he swings his bat. He starts to lean into this one and doesn't offer, but that's in there anyway. One ball and one strike count. Boy, I've seen a lot of openers. Had all the trimmings of a World Series here tonight, believe me. Fastball is high to Campanaris. Count of two balls and one strike. We have a press box tonight, and this is a big press box here at the Coliseum, and it's completely loaded. We have people from considerably far out of town and come in to see this one. Both members of the press and just good baseball fans. Campanaris swings and fouls it back. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, one off. Last half of the third inning. I was particularly glad tonight to see a fellow I haven't seen for quite a while. I did some spotting for me uh, when we were on the football circuit together, and uh, he came up from Los Angeles. And John Ramsey sitting right here, and he, he just couldn't keep his nose out of things. He, he had to help a little, he said. Got a scorecard working. Now the 2-2 pitch. Golly cuts it loose, fastball, swung on, missed, strike three. So that's all for Campanaris. A mild threat going here in the bottom of the third inning, but nothing uh, comes out of it. No runs, there were no base hits, a walk left a man, and there were no errors. That's the first base runner left on by Oakland in the ball game. The score at the end of three full innings of play. Baltimore two, Oakland nothing.
than hundreds. A hundred millimeter cigarette that gives you the same good taste from end to end. Because L&M Golden Hundreds are a balanced blend of quality tobaccos. So if you're looking for good taste from first puff to last, try new L&M Golden Hundreds. here at the Coliseum. The Baltimore Birds are leading it 2 to nothing over the Oakland A's. We step into the top half of the fourth inning. Brooks Robinson, the first man up. Luke Cross comes to him with a let-up pitch, and it's in there for the strike. Ball is down around the network, so you want to stand by the plug. We're going to pull it in a few minutes. As soon as Brooks Robinson, we find out what happens to him, we'll have a station break. Cross delivers fastball. Swung on, there's a high pop-up back for pitcher's mound. Coming in for it is Sal Bando up on pitcher's mound, makes the catch. So that's all for Brooks Robinson popping up to the third baseman at pitcher's mound, and we have the first out. With pause now for station identification, this is the Oakland A's Baseball Network. This is the Major League Voice of Northern California, KNBR San Francisco, welcoming the Oakland A's to the Bay Area. Fielder Frank Robinson was the leadoff man in the second inning and popped up to second baseman Johnny Donaldson, so he's up for his second whack at it now. He's batting at 167 at game time. That's all much like Frank. He works that ball pretty good. Takes a fastball, shaded inside off the hips. That's ball one. Cross leans forward, gets his sign from Roof. Pitch is made to the plate. The fastball is under the knees and just a little outside. Robinson steps away, takes the meat under the bat, kicks the rubber out, and kicks the mud out of the spikes. Holds that bat about straight up and down. Now Scrush serves up. Way inside. Oh, Cross has gotten behind very quickly now. Robinson. This is Frank Robinson. He got Brooks Robinson on a pop-up to Sal Bando, right back of uh, pitcher's mound. Robinson digging in now. Moves that Shalili back and forth. Cross comes to him. Whistles his curve in there for the strike. hugs up a little tighter on the plate now, put that left foot forward to it, and he's standing about three quarters deep now, not as deep as he usually stands. Takes a look at a pitch, and that's outside, ball four. Well, Robinson walks here with one out the bottom, uh, the top of the fourth inning. And the way on uh, bases on balls, that is the second one given up by Krause. the number two hitter in the second inning with one out. The base is empty. Crashed his first home run of the year. Hit it into the right center field section. Quite a few rows back. The boys in the trade say he poleaxed that. He's a big guy. He can do it. Left-hand hitter. He's after a fastball and doesn't get it. Frank Robinson bluffed going down first base that time. Bill Roof came right up out of the chute, cocked and ready to throw. be followed by Dave Johnson. This ball's kind of nervous with that bat. He keeps pumping it back and forth and pumping it and pumping it. Now he's ready. Cross comes to him with a soft curve, and that's inside. One ball, one strike count. Frank Robinson is being held on at first base by Webster. The umpire down there looking things over is Frank Umont. Now there's Robinson taking his lead. Let's see if he's on the move this time. He can go. He holds as the pitch is made, and Powell takes it high. Two balls and one strike. Time's called for the moment while I 
Rashford, the umpire, says something to the second base umpire, Bill Valentine. Now we go back into action. Down the bullpen, Neil Segui starts back to work for the Oakland A's ready for the 2-1 count on the 2-1 count. Down comes the pitch. Robinson breaks the pitch and swung on. There's a high foul ball hit back into the stands out of play. So Robinson off and running as uh, Baltimore played the hit and run. Has to come on back. Two balls and two strikes. Powell standing just outside the batter's box now. Waiting for Cross to get a new ball already. Let's see what Frank Robinson's doing this time. Pretty good size lead. Webster holds the corner. Weaver coaching at first base. There goes the runner. The pitch is swung on. Hit down to Bando. The only play Bando can make is the first base. They got Webster. And Robinson keeps right on going. And Roof is down there. Back it up and grabs it for the tag. And now they're claiming that there was interference, obstruction. They're claiming obstruction by the shortstop. And let's see whether or not they're going to uh, allow the obstruction. Evan Ashford is being called upon by third base umpire Jim Honacek to come in for a ruling. And Campanaris is down there talking to them right now. If there was obstruction on the play, of course, it will change the complexion of uh, the situation on the field right now. We'll have to wait and see exactly what comes out. Bob Kennedy is down there talking to Campanaris. But Phil Roof had a fine backup at third base. As Robinson came charging over there, Book Powell was thrown out at first base. And Ramon Webster fed that ball back over to third base to Roof, who was backing up. And Campanaris is now talking to two umpires out there, and it looks as though Robinson is going to be given third base because of the obstruction. And that's the size of it. So Robinson moves all the way around to third base on obstruction. Bull piles out for the second out in the inning. Johnson coming on. Dave Johnson hitting right-handed. He's 0 for 1 tonight. Started off tonight hitting a 333, 4 for 12. Right-hand hitter. Runs up on the first pitch, flips the button, takes it in there for the strike. into Dave Johnson. He does. Johnson backs off and takes it inside. One ball, one strike count. Uphill fan around the left, playing deep. Overhand curveball snapped off outside. Johnson's count, two balls, one strike. Trying to handle the bat around in his hands. Himself a better grip on it. He wears a golf glove on his right hand when he steps up there to the plate. Two and one right now. Robinson leading off at third, two down. Pitch inside off the chest. Three balls, one strike now. Dave Johnson swinging the lumber. Would have been out of the inning if it hadn't been for the obstruction call on Campanaris. Frank Robinson was allowed to take third base on the play rather than uh, being out as tagged by Phil Roof. Pitch on the corner at the knee. Three and two. the 
the 3-2 pitch. On Dave Johnson. He swings on it. It's a line shot into right field for the base hit. Robinson comes trotting in to score. And it's now 3 to nothing in favor of Baltimore. So the obstruction play did hurt here. Johnson's single to right. Gives him a run batted in. Gives the Baltimore Birds their third run of the evening. Hit number three off cross. The batter up there now, hitting left-handed, is Dave May. First pitch to him is right in there for the strike. Penrod's pitch. Second high. One ball, one strike. Inning number four. One run has been scored by Baltimore. They're leading it three to nothing as we play here in the top of the fourth inning. Dave May, 0 for 1 tonight. Swings on the next pitch, doesn't get it. One ball, two strikes. leading at first. Dave May waiting at the plate. In comes the pitch. Swung on. Missed strike three. So, in the fourth inning, one run. There was one base hit. There was one error. That being charged to Campanaris on the obstruction play. And there was one man left on. So the score at the end of three and one half innings of play. It's Baltimore three. Oakland nothing. Oakland A's announced the sale of their 1968 premier yearbook. I saw one tonight, and it's a dandy. And you could be among the first to become acquainted with the A's players and front office personnel by purchasing this great new yearbook. It's a big, colorful book with exciting pictures of all the players in action, as well as close-up shots of each, and the complete baseball background with batting averages and, and pitching records ever since that fella came into the professional baseball. All you have to do to get your 1968 Oakland A's yearbook is to send one dollar to yearbook Oakland A's, Oakland Coliseum, Oakland, California. Your copy will be mailed to you very soon. Now, this is a book that you don't want to be without. It gives you information about the new Oakland A's that you won't, won't be able to get anywhere else. It'll make a great souvenir for you of the A's first year in the Bay Area and a wonderful reference book for you when you're talking about the A's with your friends or when you're listening to the games on the radio. Now, here is how you get your edition of the A's yearbook. Just send one dollar to yearbook, Oakland A's, Oakland Coliseum, Oakland, California. as they move into the last half of the fourth inning. Reggie Jackson comes to bat, hitting left-handed. Dave McNally with three runs to go on is ready to bend the elbow into the plate. Down comes the pitch, in there for the strike. Left-hander going to a left-hand hitter. He's after the next one, doesn't get it. Something started here in the bottom of the fourth inning for the Oakland A's. They're trading it by three runs. Outfield, round to right, they're playing deep. They know Jackson can hit it. Doesn't this time. Swings misses, up strike three. So Jackson goes down, leading off in the fourth inning. That brings on Bando. Bando's done. 
Came up in the first inning and was out number three, rolling out to shortstop Mark Belanger. Takes a look at a curve, and that cost him. That's in there. comes to him with a pitch way inside and low. Fletcher couldn't hold it. One ball, one strike. Bando will be followed by Webster. In the honesty of fair reporting, we must call your attention to the fact that McNally is pitching in the fourth inning with one out and has not given up a base hit to the A's as yet. He's been just about as tough as anything you want to see. Delivers the pitches just outside shoulder high. Two balls and one strike. The only uh, base runner the A's have had tonight is pitcher Cross himself. That came in the third inning with two outs. ball right up the middle. Two away here in the fourth inning. McNally went down the batting order, eight of them in a row before he walked Krause. Now he's retired three in order since that time. So you can see how effective this uh, fella has been. Meantime, his mates have gotten him three runs to go on. The way he's working, that could be plenty. Oh, it's, uh, this game does flip-flops, inning by inning. Curve ball to Webster is in there for the strike. Webster was the leadoff man in the second inning and popped up to third baseman Brooks Robinson. Left-hander working to a left-hand hitter. Throws the sweeper and misses low and outside. One ball and one strike. jumps now to two and one on Ramon Webster should he get on Danny Keeter the wearer of number two in the on deck circle McNally coasting right along delivers a fastball gets it over right at the knees two balls two strikes two outs nobody on here in the bottom of the fourth inning comes back 2-2. Comes over the top, and the pitch is swung on and fouled away to the left of the plate. Webster got a handful of dirt. But only in one hand. He's wearing a golf club on his left hand. Get a better grip on that bat. Opens his stance slightly now down the first base side. McNally gets his sign from his catcher, Bleffrey. He's ready to work that crossfire and almost had Webster going for it. A little outside to run the count to three and two. <laughs> Talking to peak of the cap as McNally steps up to the mound. Webster pumps and waits. A 3-2 pitch. Webster swings and bounces it right back to the mound. McNally waits for it to come down. Turns, throws to Powell, and Webster's out. Sir, that uh, guy McNally's been pretty tough up to now. Nothing across here in the last half of the fourth inning. And the score at the end of four. Baltimore three. And open nothing. Well, the open days are happy to be playing host to a new Bay Area sports feature. 
a game with the California Golden Bears at the Coliseum the night of April 25th. The A's will play the university team an exhibition game for the benefit of the Oakland Athletic League and the University of California Academic Awards Program. The A's will pay all expenses of putting the game on and turn over two-thirds of the gross receipts to the Oakland Athletic League and the remaining one-third to the university. Tickets are on sale now for that game at a dollar and a half for adults and one dollar for students. And we're told that students at all Oakland high schools and junior high schools are selling them. There are no reserved seats for this one. All tickets are on a first-come, first-served basis. A's owner Charles O'Finley invites you to join with the A's and help make this a successful event for the benefit of two worthy local cubs. Get your tickets for the exhibition game between the University of California and the A's for the night of April 25th from students at the Oakland Junior and Senior High. See you there. Inning we go. Stepping up there. Right hand hitter is Mark Belanger. Across the pitch to him is missing its target for ball one. Cross comes back. Belanger leans and doesn't offer. The pitch is high off the base. It's ball two. Bang, bang play that had uh, 
Vandal throwing to first base on a quick pickup. Pitch is uh, swung on and uh, hit down the third base side. Foul. Actually, it was a punt attempt, and uh, McDonald will be registered and struck out. So they'll give Cross his first strikeout. down as a base hit. He's on the first. One away here in the top half of the fifth inning. Kurt Fleffrey up there now. He walks and popped the second. He takes a pitch low. That's ball one. California, KNBR, San Francisco, your official Oakland A's baseball station. Good play. Three. Down of a ball and two strikes with one out and Lancer on at first base. Cross turns, throws easily over to first to keep the Lancer close. All the way back up to the press section. Al Brown. Now rides right along with one ball, two strikes. Baltimore leads it three to nothing here. Playing in the top half inning number five. Baltimore scored one in the second, one in the third, and one in the fourth. They've hit two home runs tonight, both solo affairs, one by Belanger and one by Powell. Soft curve. Swung on by Bluffrey and uh, popped back Powell. His roof a new ball for his pitcher across to work with. These are four innings. This guy McNally has been tough. He's given up no hits. Cross is ready to work now to Kirk Bleffery, the leadoff man in the batting order. Checks the runner at first, delivers a plate, pitches right off the chin point. Bleffery has to get back from that one. Two balls and two strikes. Mark Belanger with his hit to third base is on at first. One out. He holds his time. The pitch is swung on and misses strike three. A referee goes down swinging here in the fifth inning. Second strikeout for Krause. Paul Blair comes on. All wrapped into a double play in the first inning. Uh, was out number three in the third inning with a fly ball to Reggie Jackson, right field. 
Two down, one on. Mark Blanchard. The runner at first base. Webster holds the corner. Here comes Paul Blair now. Slender, right-hand hitter, standing deep. Cross is easy curveball is popped up. Right down by first base. Ramon Webster handles it, and that is all here in the fifth inning. A little correct, but that was about it. No runs, one hit. And there's one man left on. The score at the end of four and one half innings of play remains Baltimore three and Oakland nothing. a cigarette that gives you the same good taste from end to end. Because L&M Golden Hundreds are a balanced blend of quality tobaccos. So if you're looking for good taste from first puff to last, try new L&M Golden Hundreds. L&M This is Monty Moore, and I'll be with you now for the last half of the ball game, which has turned into quite a pitcher's beat here by Dave McNally. McNally has stopped the A's without a base hit, and Danny Cater leads off now. And the crowd here at the Coliseum, which is a beautiful crowd tonight, trying to get their newborn heroes to get on track and get started. McNally, the left-hander, rocked. Here's the pitch. Cater swings, bounces one through the middle, out towards shortstop. Belanger's up with it, throwing the first for the easy out, and there's one away. The A's so far in the ball game have not had a ball out of the infield. That's how effective McNally has been with his breaking ball, particularly. Here's John Donaldson. A second baseman popped to third, his only time up in the ball game. Scores Baltimore three and Oakland nothing. Still lots of time to go for lots of excitement, though. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss, strike one. The A's were a come from behind club all spring long and climaxed it yesterday with a come from behind two run ninth inning to beat the Yankees in New York. They've been from behind from the time Luke Powell struck a first home run in the second inning here tonight. Donaldson hits a foul ball out of play into the stand. It's strike two. No balls, two strikes on John Donaldson. One away last half of the fifth inning. Donaldson bangs one to the right side of the infield on the ground. Johnson up with it, throws the foul, and there are two away. Now the batter is the A's catcher, Phil Roof. I've seen McNally pitch a lot of baseball. I don't think I've ever seen him with this good a control. He is spotting the curveball around on the corners of the plate. And not a ball has been hit out of the infield. If you've ever seen a start on what looks to be possible no-hit ball game, this is it. Foul ball away, strike one by Phil Roof. And Roof may have to come out of the ball game now. He went down on his knees again. Earlier in the game, he started to swing, checked his swing, and now he's walking away. And I'll tell you this, when Phil Roof walks out of a ball game, he's got to be hurt. He is one of the most... Well, one of the toughest guys I've known in the game. He spent all last year behind the plate for the A's with a, a thumb on the catching hand that was swollen twice its normal size right in the joint and kept on catching and catching and I know what it is to catch a baseball on a sore thumb on the catching hand and he played all year. Earlier in this game, Phil started to swing, checked his swing, and something happened back up in the top of his arm. Billy Jones, the A's trainer, went out at that time and... Roof stayed on. 
This time he swung and went down to the knees. He was hurting so badly. So they've called for help out of the bullpen as Roof is carrying his arm and going back into the training room with A's trainer, Billy Jones. Now the batter will be Jim Pagliaroni. A's newly acquired catcher. They bought him from the Pittsburgh Pirates. Pag hit the ball quite well in spring training. He's also hurt. He has a knee puncture. Uh, it was cut badly enough as he crashed into a restraining wall in Sarasota, Florida this spring that they had to take some stitches down inside the knee. Well, about four or five days ago during a workout in Baltimore, Washington, Washington, I believe it was, he was catching batting practice and all of a sudden went back into the training room and his knee was training and they have not had him in action since. But here he is, Jim Pagliaroni batting for Phil Roof. He'll come on with a count of no balls, one strike. strong guy, right-handed batter, with a 274 lifetime batting average in the big leagues. Spent a lot of time with the Boston Red Sox and also with the Pittsburgh Pirates. McNally goes to the windup, kicks the leg around and throws. Curve is low. With Roof in the training room injured and Pagliaroni in the game, the A's have only one more catcher, and he is a fellow who's never been behind the plate in a big league ball game, Dick Green. Here's the pitch. Pagliaroni ripped one deep to left field. That ball is hit well, but Frank Robinson should get it. He's got it right near the foul line. Jim Pagliaroni hit one hard into the corner in left field, but Frank Robinson playing with a full hitter was in the right spot. So in the fifth inning, it's no runs, hits, or errors, and nobody left after five full innings of play. The score is the Baltimore Orioles three, and the Oakland A's nothing. Clearoni hit one hard into the corner in left field, but Frank Robinson playing with a full hitter was in the right spot. So in the fifth inning, it's no runs, hits, or errors, and nobody left after five full innings of play. The score is the Baltimore Orioles three, and the Oakland A's nothing. sixth inning now. Brooks Robinson, the leadoff batter for Baltimore, as they'll have Frank Robinson to follow, and then Booth Powell. The middle of the batting order, the power man of the birds. Robinson, so far this evening, has lined to center and popped up to third. has pitched pretty well, but two balls have been hit out of the park on him. Here's the pitch. That might be another one. It's deep to left field. Danny Cater right at the fence, holding up. He jumps up, and he has not got it. It's gone. It's a home run. Brooks Robinson hits one just out of the reach of a jumping Danny Cater over the left field fence, and the Baltimore Orioles are leading four to nothing. players were saying prior to the game tonight in batting practice that the ball is really carrying. When you hit it that hard, it carries right over the fence. Brooks Robinson bangs one out of here and it makes it four to nothing. Now here's Frank Robinson. 
He walked in the fourth inning and scored. The pitch, curveball, swing and a miss, and Robbie almost went to his knees. He took such a big cut. Action out in the A's bullpen is continuing. Diego Segui has made as many pitches out there tonight almost as Lou Krause has on the mound. Here's the pitch. Change up to Robinson is inside. Paul Lindblad, a left-hander, joins Diego Segui in the A's bullpen. Lou Krause has given up three long balls tonight. The pitch, curve, swung on and fouled down. One ball, two strikes on Frank Robinson with boot foul on deck. Nobody down. We're in the sixth inning. Krauss throws a curve that's a beauty. Strike three, Robinson heads back to the dugout. He knew he was fooled on that one. He did not see one fastball that time at the plate. Three curve balls and a changeup. He fouled off the change. He looked at that curve for a call, strike three. That's four strikeouts for Krauss now. Here's Book foul. put the B right on this big fella. He says if Powell has a good year, we have a chance to win the American League pennant. And he's off to a good start. Brass winding throws. Breaking ball inside to Powell. Ball one. The score is Baltimore four and Oakland nothing. On opening night, 1968. The crowd here has not had a whole lot to cheer about for the guys in the wedding gown white. Here's a pitch. Just outside. Krauss moving the ball around. Two and oh to the big boog. Here's the pitch. Change up inside. Ball three. Manager Bob Kennedy is standing on the top edge of the dugout steps. Almost with a hook in his hand, you can see him looking at Krauss. Down right the pitch, Powell takes a look at Cole, strike one, three and one now. Krauss is scheduled to be the second batter in the next inning. He'd like to see Krauss get through this inning so he wouldn't have to waste a pitcher. For just one inning. To foul. Fastball hit up into the air. Foul. Into the stand. I believe it's a souvenir. Three balls, two strikes on John Powell. It's been a very, very pleasant night here in Oakland. and light wraps and seem to be enjoying themselves a lot. Here's the pitch. Ball four. Powell goes to first base. Now the batter is Dave Johnson who knocked in a run with two outs in the fourth inning. There goes Bob Kennedy to the mound with a long, slow walk. That might mean the end of Lou Cross. He's looking down into the bullpen where he has left-hander Paul Lindblad and right-hander Diego Segui. And Segui's going to come on. Well, Diego is ready, I'll tell you that. If throwing for about three or four innings makes a guy ready. So there's the first pitching change that Bob Kennedy has made here at the Coliseum. The Orioles in the first inning got a walk from Krauss to Bleffrey. Then Lou got a great double play turned in behind him by the A's young right fielder Reggie Jackson who caught a line drive hit by Blair on a hit and run play and fired it back into the infield at first for the double play. Luke Fowle set off the fireworks for the Birds in the second with a home run. Mark Falanger, a light-hitting shortstop ordinarily, hit one out in the third inning. 
in the fourth. Frank Robinson got a one-out walk, and he looked like a double play at end of the inning when the A's turned in some fine defense. Mando to Webster to Phil Roof, the A's catcher, covering at third base. But an obstruction play had been ruled as Frank Robinson rounding second base had hit somebody in an A's uniform, and they ruled that he was safe at third. And then Johnson came on and got a base hit to knock in a run. And Brooks Robinson dumped one just out of the reach of a jumping Danny Cater over the fence for the home run here in the sixth inning. So Lou Cross is out. So manager Bob Kennedy's gone to a new pitcher by the name of Diego Segui. Fans, we'd like to remind you to go with the mileage maker. Use the extra mileage you get with Richfield Imperial Boron to live a little extra. Might remind you that the A's will be in action at 80 more games here at the Coliseum and many more throughout the summer around the American League. And Richfield is mighty happy to be bringing those games to you play-by-play. If you'd like to know where and when the A's will be playing, drop into your nearby Richfield station and ask for a free copy of the Oakland A's schedule. It fits nicely right into your billfold and will be a very handy thing to have for you all year. Well, the A's new pitcher, Diego Segui, is a guy who was the pitcher of the year in the Venezuelan Winter League. He's been in the A's organization for some time. He drops down to the belt. They're not holding Powell on at first base. Here's the pitch. Slider hits the outside corner for a call strike. They've just called an automatic ball on Diego Segui. The first base umpire, Frank Umon, detected Segui going to his mouth while he's standing on the pitching not on the rubber necessarily, but somewhere on the pitching mound. It's a 16-foot circle of dirt in the middle of the infield, and if a pitcher touches his mouth with his hands while standing there, he can go behind that part of the infield, stand on the grass, and uh, let her fly all he wants. But when he gets up on that dirt, he can't do it. So they've called ball two now, two balls and one strike on Dave Johnson. Pitch, low, ball three. One strike count. One out and one run in here in the sixth inning. Baltimore leading four to nothing. They've had only five hits in the ball game, but they really made them count. Here's the pitch. That's a strike. And Emmett Ashford gives the crowd a little bit of uh, extracurricular arm and leg pumping there, indicating the strike. Full count, three balls, two strikes. Fidgeter on that mound. He's known as a slow worker. He has his sign now. Powell leads it first. They're holding him on now with a 3 2 count. He's going. The pitch is swung on, hit on the ground to the right side of the infield. Donaldson boots it and will not make a play anywhere. Everybody is safe. Powell broke on the pitch as the count was 3 and 2. Johnson trying to hit behind him, hit the ball towards the hole. Donaldson had broken with a right handed batter at the plate to cover second. The ball was hit back to his left. He had to throw on the brakes, go run the ball down. And it ran right up his arm and carried him away. So the Orioles have runners now. At first and second with one out, and the batter is, Lee May, is uh, Dave May. The first error of the ball game. Left-handed batter. With Powell at second base and Johnson at first. So far, it's been all the birds here tonight. Segui down to the belt. Here's the pitch. Strike one. Good fastball over that outside corner. Diego throws a fork ball and has a good one. Uses it a lot against left-handed batters. Breaks down and away from the left-hander. Segui's pitch. There it is. The fork ball is too high this time, though. And the count goes to one and one. He's infield playing 
about medium depth, hoping for the double play ground ball. May can really run. One ball, one strike, and one out. There's a pretty pitch for strike two. Beautiful sight it is here at the Coliseum. Looking back over the bleachers in center field and out over the top of the stadium, see the Oakland Hills over behind the ballpark. The lights in them. Here's the geese pitch to May. Low. Ball two. Here in the sixth inning, Baltimore leading Oakland, four to nothing. Segee's pitch, swinging, strike three. So May is out of there now. There are two down of the batters, Mark Belanger, the shortstop, who's had a home run and a single here. Belanger was not in the Oriole lineup when the A's were in Baltimore. He had been notified that he'll have to go into the service soon in a military reserve unit, which has been activated. Been notified of Vietnam orders, as we understand it. The Orioles traded away shortstop Luis Aparicio to the White Sox to make room for this guy, Belanger, who's quite a player. Here's the pitch. Sliders outside, ball one. There's a ball bouncing out of the A's bullpen in left field out onto the playing surface. Paul Lindblad is working down there. Mark Belanger, number seven of the birds at the plate. Cox the bat, Segui gives him a look. Here's the pitch. There's a drive towards left field. Danny Cater should have this one. Moves over to his left a little bit. Puts the squeeze on it for the third out of the inning. In the sixth inning, one run, one hit, one error, and two birds left on. So the score in the middle of the sixth is Baltimore four and Oakland nothing. Hey, fans, if you're one of those drivers still paying for third pump mid premium gasoline, here's a tip that can save you some money. The next time you need gasoline, why don't you pull into a Richfield station and ask for improved Richfield regular? There's a good chance you'll discover that you really don't need a more expensive mid premium. And the reason? Well, this Richfield regular is powered up with the mid premiums, but priced down to the level of major brand regulars. And this gasoline has power to spare, even for most V8s. Give this improved motor fuel a try. There's a good bet your car will perform every bit as well as it did on a mid premium gasoline. And you can enjoy this sense of power while paying only regular price. Need a fill up now? Then give improved Richfield regular a chance to show what it can do for you. to lead off for the Oakland A's and then a pinch hitter, Mike Hirschberger, has come out onto the on-deck area. Last half of the sixth inning, Dave McNally has spun a no-hitter so far. The A's have had only one base runner, and it was the pitcher, Lou Krause, who drew a walk in the third inning. around the Bay Area during the winter, making speeches, playing in golf tournaments. He can make a lot more right here tonight if he can get a base hit. Rick is off to a very slow start. Nobody's too worried about him. He's a finance lead, and he'll definitely get his base hit. Monday at the plate. Robertson shallow at third. Here's the pitch for McNally. Curve is low. Ball one. 
Weffrey catching his first major league ball game. So far, he's had a jewel. Toughest play he's had to make is throw the ball back to the pitcher. Here is the pitch to Monday. Line drive to deep center field. Wow, that was really hit. It's going. about living a little extra. And that's what the West is all about, isn't it? 
We have more mountains to climb, and we climb them. We have more deserts to explore, and we explore them. We have more beaches to enjoy, and we enjoy them. And if you're the kind of person who likes to live a little extra, you ought to know about Richfield Imperial Boron. That's the mileage maker. It's the gasoline that lets you live a little extra. You see, there's extra mileage in every gallon of Richfield Imperial Boron. Extra mileage you can use to live a little extra. Isn't there something you'd like to do? Maybe it's driving someplace just to take some interesting pictures. Maybe go on a hike, take in a play. How about horseback riding or just wandering around the zoo? However you like to live a little extra, Richfield Imperial Boron fits right into your way of life. We'd like to suggest you go with Richfield Imperial Boron. Go with a mileage maker and live a little extra. Step out here for just about 10 seconds while the A's new pitcher warms up. It's station identification time. This is the Oakland A's Baseball Network. This is the Major League Voice of Northern California, KNBR in San Francisco, welcoming the Oakland A's to the Bay Area. The A's third pitcher of the night, Paul Lindblad, a left-hander from Chanute, Kansas, comes on. Lindy has been a, both a starter and a reliever, basically a reliever for the A's. He's been in only one ball game this year. He pitched one inning against the Washington Senators, and big Frank Howard tagged him for a home run in that ball game. Incidentally, Howard, Epstein, and the rest of the Washington Senators will be in here on Friday night, Saturday night, that's cap night, and Sunday afternoon at the Coliseum. Plenty of good seats available for all three of those games this weekend. Lindblad to pitch to Dave McNally now. Call strike. The ball is one strike. Lindy wheels another one in there. It's a breaking ball. Swung on and missed strike two. is Baltimore 4 and Oakland 1. Six innings have been played here on opening night 1968 before baseball and political dignitaries galore. Even some advertising executives. Here's the pitch. Outside for a ball. McNally has to play with the count of one ball and two strikes. He fires. Strike three. Got him looking. Lindblad strikes out the first man he faces. A Lou Krause pitched five and a third innings tonight and allowed only five base hits. Unfortunately, three of them went the distance here in this ballpark. Lou walked two and struck out four. He pitched good baseball tonight. Segei gets credit for pitching two-thirds of an inning. And allowed any hits or runs. Struck out one batter. Here's Kurt Bleffery. Lindblad pitches. Slider misses low. Ball one. Breaking ball, it's in there. Leffrey pulled his foot out in the bucket that time, and the ball snapped over the plate for a strike. One ball, one strike to count. One out. We're in the seventh inning of play. Here's the pitch. Fast ball hit hard down into the corner and right. It's by first in fair territory for a base hit. Jackson chasing the ball in the corner. Leffrey on his way to second. And he'll be in there standing up with a double. Kurt Fleffer yanks one right by the bag at first and down into the Baltimore bullpen, which has not had any work tonight. So for the Birds, that's base hit number six in the game. And coming on now is Paul Blair, the center fielder. This 
being our first night game baseball broadcast of the 1968 season, we realize we have a lot of new listeners tonight who have not been able to hear us before, and we're mighty happy to have you join us. We hope you'll make it a habit to dial right in in the same spot many nights through the 1968 season as Richfield brings you baseball. Lepre off second base. Here's the pitch. Curve is low for a ball. to go again to the plate with a pitch. Smash ball working its way outside. Two balls and no strikes. Paul Blair tonight. Land into a double play. Fly to right and popped up to first. Pitch to the plate. Strike called in. Lindblad hit the outside corner with a pretty pitch. Two balls, one strike. Hayes infield back all the way around. Here's the pitch on the way. High pop up. George shortstop. Campanaris and Donaldson converging on it. It's Campanaris calling for it all the way and makes the catch. So they're two down. And the batter's Brooks Robinson who hit one right over the left field fence, just out of the reach of a leaping Danny Cater for a homer in the sixth inning. There'll be occasions when the outfielders here can reach above the top of the fence and make a catch. What a pretty sight it is. Looking out onto this playing field, the fence and many of these features were added after we left this winter for spring training. Brooks Robinson at the plate. Lynn Blatt pitches. Bouncing ball back to the mound on one hop. Lindy's got it. He throws over to Webster and the side is retired. No runs, one hit, and a man left on. In the middle of the seventh inning, the score is Baltimore, four and open one. Well, fans, we hope you've noticed something special that's been happening all over the West the past several months. Al Helfer and I have been talking a lot about it all spring. Those beautiful new Richfield service stations. The ones with the attractive landscaping, the interesting use of stone and brick, appealing color schemes, architecture that fits right in with the neighborhoods these new Richfield stations serve. Now, if you haven't already visited one of the new Richfield stations in your neighborhood, we'd like to invite you to come in soon. You'll discover something. These new Richfield stations are not only pleasant to look at, but they'll also offer you the quality of service you want for your car. And something else. Richfield Imperial Boron, the mileage maker. The gasoline that gives you extra mileage that helps you live a little extra. So next time you need gasoline, pull in at the home of the mileage maker, Richfield. Enjoy the view, enjoy the service, and live a little extra. for the Oakland A's. Webster and Cater will follow here in the seventh against left-hander Dave McNally. Now, the A's are in need of some base hits. They've had only one in the ball game, and this has been a unique game and certainly lends credence to the fact that the players are calling this a home run ballpark. All told in this ball game, there have been only six, home, uh, six base hits in the game, and four of the six hits have been home runs. In defense of that, of those four, three of them would have gone out of any ballpark, I believe. Here's Bando. Oh, for two tonight. Right-handed batting, third baseman digs in at the plate. Here's the pitch from McNally. Curveball swing and a miss, strike one. from the 
Civil War with a trumpet down below us. Mando hits the ball in the air towards the stand. There may be a play on it for Powell. He's got it right in front of the dugout. Boy, this is exactly what we mentioned a little while ago. This ballpark is going to take a lot of base hits away from batters because of the huge distance between the foul lines and the stands. In any other ballpark in the American League, I believe that ball that Fando just hit would have been in the stands. But here it was caught on the warning track right in front of the dugout. There's one away. Here's Ramon Webster. McNally pitches. Curve is in there. Pretty pitch for a strike. Mack has walked only one man. He has struck out three. The A's have had only two balls in the outfield tonight. He has put the quietest to almost 50,000 fans. We've not been given the official attendance here tonight as yet. Curve is outside for a ball. We noticed the New York Mets today under perfect weather in New York had over 52,000 for their ball game. So that's the largest attendance of any opening day game in the major leagues. The A's tonight will lead the American League in attendance opening night. Pitch is swung on and foul back to the screen. and Ramon Webster, four to one, Baltimore is leading here in the last half of the seventh inning. Here's the pitch. Bouncing ball hit towards third baseman Brooks Robinson. Easy play to first for the out. Two down. And now here's Danny Cater. He's 0 for 2 tonight with a ground out to first and to short. breaking out their gold uniform sometime in this current homestand. Wearing their wedding gown whites tonight with a Kelly Green trim. McNally's pitch to Cater. Ground ball to the second baseman Johnson. He throws the first to the A's go one, two, three and still can't get the ball out of the infield on this left-hander. After seven full innings of play, the score is Baltimore four and open one. Now. 
Robbie's 0 for 2 tonight with a walk. He scored a run. Pitch on the way. Outside. Ball one for Paul Lindblad, a left-hander, the third A's pitcher of the night. The Orioles have not had more than one hit in any inning tonight. Three of their hits have gone all the way. Here's a pitch. Robinson yanks one foul. Down to the A's duck, uh, bullpen area. Big Gene Dropender, right hander's going to work out in the bullpen for Baltimore. Here's the pitch. Robinson takes a slider inside and high. Two balls and one strike. Today be followed by John Powell and Dave Johnson. Orioles batting in the eighth inning. The A's came into tonight's affair with a record of three wins and two losses. Baltimore's record was two and two. Ben Blatt's pitch on the way. There's a drive to the shortstop area off the glove of Cameron Harris and out into left field. Robinson ripped one hard off the glove of Campanaris in the air. It goes to the base hit. Gene Brabender, one of the pitchers, and Linhard is the other. Dave Linhard. A ball to ball. McNally hasn't shown any signs of needing any help with tonight as yet. The A's have had only one hit off of him. John Powell. His home run in the second inning was the first ever hit out of this ballpark. Pitch from Lindblad. Swung on right back to the man. Lindblad knocks it down, picks it up, fires to Kevin Harris at second. They got him there over the first. They got a pair and double play. Oh, Lindblad was almost knocked off the mound by Booth Powell. He made a great stop of the ball, picked it up, fired a perfect peg to Campanaris. Campy relayed it on over to Ramon Webster, and they got the double play. The A's second double play of the night. Actually, it's the third double play they've turned in in the game. But one of them was nullified by an obstruction call. Another two-way right quickly, and here is Johnson, the second baseman. Four to one, Baltimore, the 1966 American League and world champions of baseball. Basically the same team. New pitching changes. Small club can make a run for the pennant in the American League this year again. Here's the pitch. Outside for a ball. The Orioles fell off from the championship in 66 to sixth place last year. They had a lot of men injured. Including one Frank Robinson. Lynn Blatt's pitch to Johnson. Low went away. Two balls, no strike. Baltimore and Oakland last year played 18 times. Baltimore winning 10 and the A's winning 8. Fetches a change-up curve right through there for a call strike. Pitch coming down, line drive towards left, and it's curving foul. The Orioles picked up a good left-handed pitcher today, and Pete Rickard, who was not with the Orioles the last time the A's played them, Rickard had been serving in Washington, D.C. with the National Guard.
give him a little bit of time to get back in shape. He's been on the military list. Here's a pitch. Swing and a roller right side of the infield. Donaldson up with it. Hurries it throw to Webster for the out. And the Orioles are out without a run here in the eighth inning. No runs, one hit, and nobody left on. So the score in the middle of the eighth inning. Baltimore Orioles four in the Oakland days one. Well, fans, you can't see it because this is on radio, but I hold in my hand a little plastic card to let you live a little extra. This is a Richfield credit card, and it's good for all kinds of things besides Richfield Imperial Boron, the mileage maker. Your Richfield credit card is welcome at more than 60,000 service stations coast to coast. Use it to charge meals at fine restaurants and for lodging at excellent hotels and motels. Rent a car from Hertz and put it on your Richfield credit card. You may even charge a vacation trip on your Richfield credit card and pay for the entire trip in easy monthly installment. So if you're the kind of person who likes to get out and go to live a little extra, you should be carrying the credit card that lets you live a little extra, a Richfield credit card. Any Richfield dealer will be happy to speed through your application. Ask for one the next time you pull in and fill up with Richfield Imperial Boron, the mileage maker. And while you're there, ask for one of the A's handy bill full-size baseball schedules. Well, the crowd's stirring a little bit now, trying to get something going. For the Oakland A's, John Donaldson will lead it off, then Jim Pagliaroni and Rick Monday. The A's have had only one base hit, and it was a dandy. Rick Monday hit a line drive homer over the center field fence, back up into the runway that goes out of the ballpark. And that's the only hit the A's have had. They've only had two balls out of the infield off McNally. and 164 fans here tonight. A thrilling sight for anybody who follows baseball or any kind of a sport. Great to see a crowd like this. McNally pitches to Donaldson. Drops the curve and there's strike one. Well, it doesn't take a whole lot to get four runs to get them going. Put a couple of three things together. McNally tonight has been the master. Little left-hander pitches. Donaldson took a half cutter to the pitch and missed his strike two. Last half of inning number eight. pitches. That ball swung on a missed strike three. He buried that ball deep in the mid of the catcher as he fired it by Donaldson on the inside. McNally has struck out four tonight. Here's the A's catcher, Jim Pagliaroni. He ripped one deep in the left field his first time up. He came on when Phil Roof, the A's regular catcher, was injured. I don't know what was wrong with Phil, but he grabbed his left arm when he swung at a pitch or started to and checked his swing early in the game back up the second time and went down. And when he goes out of a game, he's got to be hurting bad. Ball strike to Pagliaroni. Slow curveball from McNally. Here's the pitch. Curveball. Pagliaroni hits it up into the air in a not very deep left field. Frank Robinson coming in on the ball and makes the grab. There are two down. Monday rifled his first home run of the year out of here over the field fence. Put a couple of three things together. McNally tonight has been the master. For the left-hander pitches. Donaldson took a half cut at his pitch and missed his strike two. Fastball swung on a missed strike three. He buried that ball deep in the mid of the catcher as he fired it by Donaldson on the inside. McNally has struck out four tonight. Here's the A's catcher, 
Jim Pagliaroni, he ripped one deep in the left field his first time up. He came on when Phil Roof, the A's regular catcher, was injured. I don't know what was wrong with Phil, but he grabbed his left arm when he swung at a pitch or started to and checked his swing early in the game. Came back up the second time and went down. And when he goes out of a game, he's got to be hurting bad. All strike to Pagliaroni. Slow curveball from McNally. Pagliaroni hits it up into the air in a not very deep left field. Frank Robinson coming in on the ball and makes the grab. There are two down. Here's Rick Monday, who rifled his first home run of the year out of here over the center field fence. Rick, one for two tonight. big crowd here tonight, though the A's have not given a much offensive showing to cheer about. Here's a pitch. Monday takes the curve, call strike. No balls, one strike on Monday. The pitch. Monday takes another curve, call strike two. McNally has thrown strikes tonight. He's walked only one man, and that was on a 3-2 count to Lou Cross in the third inning. ahead of Monday throws to the plate again the curve and the same results call strike three so Rick Monday stood at the plate this time after hitting a home run last time looked at three straight curve balls and didn't pull the trigger so in the eighth inning it's no runs hits or errors and nobody left and the score remains four to one Baltimore say if you're the kind of person who likes to get out and go to do things here's a tip that may make your trip much more pleasant Enjoy the extra mileage you get with Ridgefield Imperial Boron Gasoline, the mileage maker, to live a little extra. Get out and do some of those things you've been dreaming about. Right now, for instance, the desert is blooming beautifully, and there's still snow up in the mountains to ski on, or the kids to play in. Down at the beach, it's cool and brisk, just right for hiking. Just fill up the car with family and Ridgefield Imperial Boron, and take off. Live a little extra. There's extra mileage in every tank full of Richfield Imperial Boron, and that's why it's called the Mileage Maker. So don't be a stay-at-home. Get out and enjoy this great, big, beautiful west of ours. Live a little extra. Go with the Mileage Maker, Richfield Imperial Boron. for Baltimore here in the top half of the ninth inning. Dave May, the left-handed batting right fielder for Baltimore. for the A's working on Dave May. He struck out twice tonight. The pitch drags the ball but bunts it foul. May trying to bunt his way on. One strike to count on Pagliaroni. Baltimore leading 4-1 to one at the top of the night. I said on Pagliaroni, he's the catcher. Dave May, the batter. Looking at him and Ashford talk to Pagliaroni about something. Here's the pitch. Bouncing ball towards first. Right near the bag. Webster's got it. Steps on first and retires May. Mark Belanger comes on now. He is two for three tonight. Hit a homer in the third inning, a bunch single in the fifth, and he lined out to left in the sixth inning. 
Martin home show tonight. We'll have scores of all the other games played in the big leagues. Winning and losing pitchers, home run, so forth. to Belanger. There's a drive deep in the left center field. That ball is hit well, but Rick Mundy is chasing it. He's going to get to it. He's got it. Rick Mundy makes a ninth running catch and a ball hit into left center field. Now the bird pitcher Dave McNally comes on. This guy has really pitched the ball game tonight. He has allowed only one base hit to the Oakland A's. Been here in Oakland. They had really hoped to be able to set off some fireworks tonight and win a ball game for this big crowd. Take a big ninth inning to do it now. There's a swing and a miss to McNally. Drapowski has gone to work in the Oriole bullpen now, and when they get him up, they're down to the business end of things. He is their number one stopper. John O'Donohue, a left-hander, is right beside him working. In case McNally runs into trouble in the night. Lynn Blatt's pitch. That's a little high. Two strikes to count on McNally. There's a curve. Swung on a missed strike three. So we go to the last half of the ninth inning. And this is do or die inning for the A's. The score is Baltimore four and Oakland one. Good. Here's 
the pitch to Larusa. There's a line drive to left field, a base hit. So the A's are alive here in the last half of the ninth as Tony Larusa slaps one in the left. And now here is Kathy Cavaneras, who's 0 for 3 tonight. has popped up to second, struck out, and popped to second. Never too late. It doesn't take a whole lot to stir up a three-run rally, and that's what the A's need to get back in the ballgame. McNally's pitch to Campy. High ball one. And that's the first pitch of any consequence tonight that McNally has seemingly let get away from him. Fleffrey got a pretty good test of catching ability right then as he had to go up the ladder and haul in a sailing fastball. And he fielded it cleanly. Larusa has a short lead over at first. Here's the pitch. Campy swings at the high foul ball. Off third. George the stand. Belanger's chasing it. May get there. He can't do it. It falls on the warning track. Out the dead of the stand. foul territory is really something here. You can run and run and run. And still the ball can fall on the ground. The count on the A shortstop. Campanaris is one and one. Nobody out last half of the ninth inning. McNally gets set. Round comes the left arm. Here's the pitch, a curve. The cap is outside, ball two. Much of the crowd is left here, but there are still thousands left. And they have lots of enthusiasm left as they're letting the A's know. into the top of the ninth inning at Baltimore the opening day of the season in Baltimore and almost won that ball game as Sal Bando crashed the bases loaded looked like a home run it was caught right at the fence here's the pitch to Campy swing and a ground ball to the court to Campy double play Belanger to Johnson for one to Powell double play oh that Belanger is really smooth and short he had to go to his right he came up fired a perfect peg to Johnson Johnson wheeled across second base and got Campanaris a fast runner by about three strides over at first. So McNally quelled the rally in a hurry with a quick double play, the pitcher's friend. That brings up Reggie Jackson, who has not come close to a hit here tonight. Reggie came in sporting a 500 average. McNally struck him out twice. McNally's pitch to Jackson. Low ball one. on Jackson. Here's the pitch. That's a little low. Two balls and no strikes. Jackson backs away, looks down at Johnny McNamara, the A's third base coach. Bando kneeling on deck, hoping to get a shot at this left-hander one more time tonight. Here's the pitch. Reggie's taking it, cost him right in there at the knees to strike one. Jackson with two down in the last half of the ninth inning. Run right the pitch. Strike three. Call. The ball game is over. Dave 
McNally pitches a tremendous two-hitter at the Oakland A's here tonight. In the ninth inning, no runs, one hit, and nobody left on. So the final score of the ball game in the 1968 season opener at the Oakland Coliseum. Baltimore four and Oakland one. It was an exciting evening here at the Oakland Coliseum, the first ever for American League Baseball in the Bay Area. Baltimore Orioles won it 4-1, to one, and they won a good ball game, a well-played game by everybody. The A's had some outstanding defensive plays here tonight, turning in a couple of double plays, actually three. Baltimore turned in two double plays. The fans got to see home runs hit by Boot Powell, the first ever. It'll go down in the record books as the first one hit out of this ballpark. Mark Belanger and Brooks Robinson. They got to see the Oakland A's. Rick Mundy unload a long home run right straight over the center field fence, went out of here like a rocket. And they got to see some rockets shot up over the center field fence when he hit it. There was only one other base hit, and that was by a young pinch hitter named Tony La Russa. It was just a matter of the A's were out pitched tonight. Dave McNally pitched as good a ball game as he's ever pitched, I would imagine, just about in his big league career. He pitched a two-hitter tonight, Monday's homer in La Russa's single. To show you how completely he dominated the A's, the A's left only one man on base. Baltimore had four runs on seven hits. They made no errors, and they left five on. Lou Krause, the starting pitcher for the A's, pitched pretty well. He threw three home run balls. Baltimore made the most of their hits. Diego Segui came on with two-thirds of an inning, and Paul Lindblad pitched three scoreless innings against Baltimore to wind it up. So the winning pitcher of the ball game, Dave McNally, is record 1-0 now. Lou Krause's record is 0-1 after he suffers the loss. 50,164, the second largest crowd in Major League opening this year, and actually surpassed only by the New York Mets game in New York City today. They had 52,000. But the A's play before the largest baseball crowd in the history of the Major Leagues in Northern California. 50,164. We hope the fans here enjoyed the ball game. We feel sure that they're going to be coming back to see the A's play some more. The final score again, Baltimore Orioles 4 and the Oakland A's 1. We hope you'll join us again tomorrow night when the A's play the Baltimore Orioles once again here in Oakland. Air time for our on-deck show is 10 minutes past 7. Now this is Monty Moore speaking for Al Helfer and our executive producer Hal Ashby reminding you that we'll be back shortly with more details and highlights of tonight's game on our Head and Home Show. Sportsman's Dream, first offering of choice recreational land in the beautiful Benbow Family Estate, located on California's famous Redwood Highway 101 in southern Humboldt County. 
Manboa Estates overlooks water, streams, rivers, and a lake. Have fun boating, water skiing, swimming, fishing, hunting, and horseback riding on winding redwood forest trails. And a beautiful public golf course adjacent to the world-famous Benbow Inn. An easy drive from the Bay Area, elevation only 500 feet. The climate ideal, the location at the state park at Lake Benbow and the Eel River. Cabin site, home site, a second home for continuing pleasure. Brand new. Be first to select this choice recreation land. For full details, write Benbow Estate, station KNBR, San Francisco. Spelled B-E-N-B-O-W, Benbow Estates, KNBR, San Francisco. Here's the number to call for more information right now. 893-7212. Tonight's Hidden Home Show is brought to you by Smith. For 82 years, the largest specialist in men's and boys' wear in the West. And by the high-trading Pontiac dealers known as the Pontiacers. Check your local authorized Pontiac dealer before you buy any new car. Well, tonight it was the opener here at the Oakland Coliseum. The A's lose it to the Baltimore Orioles by a score of 4-1. to We'll be back to talk baseball in just a minute. Well, I'm ready for anything you might throw today, Al, so... Let's get started. All right, what do you want to do, buddy? How do you spell Smith? How do I spell Smith?